So we've all been enjoying our best horse girl lives since the Horse Ranch pack released, right? While the majority of the focus recently has been cowboys, modern farmhouses, and yes, pink Barbie ranches, the new pack also added some much needed Native American cultural representation to the game. So if you're looking for a native home inspired by traditional Navajo architecture and history, or just a cool and unique off the grid house, not only is this build for you, but potentially the first of a series of native inspired builds. Hi everyone, it's Cindy and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So yes, we are back in Chestnut Ridge today, but this time in the neighborhood of New Appaloosa on the 20 by 20 cozy corner house. And we are indeed building a home that is inspired by uh, native Navajo or Dine female Hogan house. And as you can see here, I have already completed the basic structure and we're just working on the outside. And I'm adding in a little garden plot here so you can do a little gardening. And then in the back, I have a small pen here for keeping mini sheep and goats. But I do swap that out for a more open kind of concept. So we'll take a look at that shortly. But as I said earlier, I think it would be really cool to see a lot more native inspired uh, builds. And I haven't really seen a lot of that. We have seen a lot of people using the objects that were included, but not so much the builds themselves. So please let me know in the comments if you like that idea, if you'd like to see some more builds that are inspired by different uh, native cultures, whether they're Native American or from other areas of the world, I would definitely be up to doing like a series of those sorts of builds. And I think it's just so fascinating to to take a look at historical dwellings and of course there are limitations in the game with what we are able to build but I think it would be really cool to do something like this and you try and model it as closely as possible. So anyway, we're just doing some landscaping out here. So while I'm doing that landscaping, let me tell you a little bit more about the build. And I've also got some interesting facts in history that I've looked up about the Navajo female Hogan. And there's also a link in the description. So if you want to learn some more about it as well, I can definitely recommend that video. It was so, so interesting. I cannot recommend it enough. So most of the packs that I've used here have really focused heavily on horse ranch, cottage living, some jungle adventure, which I think pairs really nicely with the horse ranch pack. And then for the landscaping, I pulled some I, uh, flora and fauna sort of things from Strangerville as well. So those are the main packs, I would say, that um, contributed to this build. And technically, a Hogan doesn't include windows, but I felt like there should be a couple of windows in this build. So the windows really aren't authentic, but I do feel that they kind of added to the game purposes. But as far as, you know, build limitations, you know, uh, we can do an octagonal structure, that's not a problem, and the conical uh, kind of hut roof. I didn't feel like there was really a texture that was perfect for being like um, wood logs and mud and, you know, like packed mud and things like that. So I opted for the cottage living thatched roof, and I think that works pretty well. And uh, then with the inside of the Hogan, it's so interesting. You should definitely take a look on Pinterest uh, for some female Hogan interior pictures because it has the most beautiful, what they call cribbing on the inside. And it's the layering and the weaving of the poles that they use in order to create the structure. And actually, the early Navajo people, they took inspiration from nature, as many people have throughout history, for the Hogan's construction. And the roof's cribbing, which, as I said, is this weaving and layering of the poles in a clockwise direction, is the same as what the eagle and other birds use to make their nests. So when you are inside the Hogan and you look up towards the ceiling and you see this cribbing, it looks like you're inside an upturned bird nest. It's really beautiful and really, really cool. Now, there are some other limitations to creating an authentic Hogan structure. Um, one of the other big ones is it's not really possible 
in the game to create the smoke hole in the center of the domed roof. Or at least if there is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so there is no smoke hole, um, and I have had to put a, a couple of walls on the inside for the wood-burning stove because the chimney of the stove doesn't go all the way up to the roof and that looked a bit weird. And because we can't replicate that cribbing effect inside for the ceiling paint, I've just used the dirt flooring instead, which is not nearly as beautiful, but it kind of does the trick. Anyway, we're just kind of finishing off the outside. I really, really love how the outside uh, came together. You can see I kind of went back to the landscaping a couple of times and tweaked it here and there. I do go in at the end of the video and also remove some of the landscaping because I feel like it's over landscaped, um, but we'll see that later on. But we're going to be jumping into the interior very soon. So let me give you a couple more interesting facts and information about the Dine. Hogan, or at least the female Hogan. So as I said, the female Hogan is octagonal, whereas the male Hogan is uh, conical. And the poles that are used to make the structure are nearly five meters long. And here you can see I'm putting in just a couple of walls to place that wood burning stove, which I absolutely love and I will not apologize for using it at every available opportunity. I also put in a fire pit outside here, but in hindsight, I think I should have probably put a barbecue in because then you could actually make the new um, native dishes that are included in the game. So if you want to do that, you'll need to pop a barbecue in, but otherwise there is a fire pit. Um, juniper is also traditionally the type of wood that would be used to make a hogan. And the reason for that is it is a repellent to insects. And then as you'll see here with the layout, this was the easiest layout I think I have ever done because when I was looking at pictures of Hogan interiors on Pinterest I noticed by and far at least the very traditional ones there are no interior walls now I have put a couple of interior walls in because I did decide to add an interior um, bathroom but obviously in a very traditional Hogan there would probably be like an outhouse there probably is not anywhere to go to the toilet inside but I wanted there to be an inside toilet but this is an off the grid lot so all of the plumbing and all of the lighting is functional off the grid which is also why the bathroom is very dark there's not a lot of uh, off the grid wall light options that are very bright <laughs> but the general layout is very, very open. And the pictures that I saw were incredibly, extremely minimally furnished. Like, I mean, there was a wood burning stove in the center and like a bed or a sleeping cot and not really much else. <laughs> So there's a lot more furniture in this version because I'm going for a slightly more modernized Hogan, um, but still being off the grid. So there is more furniture than what traditionally would be in a Hogan. So just so that you are aware. Now, as for the female Hogan itself, there is a lot of symbolism with this structure. And of course, it is quite closely linked to birth and family. So because it's an octagonal shape, there are obviously eight walls and nine support poles. There's one support pole for each of the nine corners and then an extra ninth pole to complete the door frame. And the nine poles are symbolic of the nine months or the cycles of the moon that the mother carries a child during pregnancy. And then the dome shape is representative of the pregnant belly and the smoke hole is the symbol of the navel and the umbilical cord. So a couple of interesting facts there. Now you'll have just seen that I've used tool to flip this rug up and put it on the wall like a tapestry and I absolutely loved this idea and I think it turned out so so cool. However, when I finished decorating the dining room in just a moment here, I took a look at the layout and I realized it would actually flow better to move the dining room over next to the entrance. So here you can see I'm going to do everything again and I'm going to use tool and flip that up but now I know how to do it uh, a little more smoothly so it goes a lot faster and I move the dining room over here and I'm so happy because I think the flow is just so perfect because it's such an open concept 
uh, layout, the flow is so important. And also, uh, what I learned when I was looking into um, the facts in the history of the Hogans, the door to enter a Hogan is always placed on the east side of the building. Now, on this lot, that would have been the back side of the lot, which didn't make any sense. But once you enter into a Hogan, um, going in a clockwise direction has a lot of symbolism, as I understand it, in the Navajo culture. And so when you enter in a Hogan from the east, you always go to the left to enter into the rest of the house. And that's exactly what you do in this floor plan. So you enter in and you move uh, to the west through, or not the west, the east through the dining room and then around into the kitchen and so forth. And then when you go to exit the Hogan, you always um, exit out from the right, so thereby completing that clockwise directionality. So I thought that was really, really cool as well. And I love that I was able to model that flow in the um, overall floor plan here. And so this is, I think, the only build that I've done to date where I have not started in the kitchen. And I know we're just finishing the kitchen off here, honestly. First of all, because I wanted to make sure I could get a bathroom in here that would fit and everything. But honestly, I was intimidated with the idea of doing a bath or a kitchen in this very open floor plan. And also because I was thinking it would probably be on the diagonal and I never build on the diagonal. So... That was a bit of an issue. And then I also discovered that when you have off the grid, there is not a single set in sink, like the ones that set into the counters that are functional off the grid. And then I didn't like how the sinks that are functional off the grid are smaller than the counters. Um, so I tried the cottage living one, but there wasn't a good color swatch. So I changed it all to a light color. And then I didn't like how bright that was against all of the darker tones. And you see, I've mixed and matched the kind of more orangey and the dark, dark brown wood tones throughout. And I, I think that looked really, really nice. Um, having that mix of wood tones, but the bright, bright white uh, or cream color of the kitchen was just too jarring. So I've moved the sink over to the side and I think that works really well. I also fiddled with rugs far too much throughout this entire build. Um, so I apologize for that, uh, but there are a lot of rugs that I move around and in the end, we get them all placed where they're supposed to be. Uh, and the living room, I think, just turned out really nice and cozy as well. I also completely forgot while building to remove that extra chair that I moved into the bedroom space. Uh, but I do remember to take it out before I upload this to the gallery um, because it is available on the gallery. So if you want to find it, and I know the gallery has been having some problems, you can find it using my EAID. Uh, Higgahaven, which is H-Y-G-G-E-H-A-V-E-N. So it is available on the gallery, and you are most welcome to download it and add it to your game. Uh, but I did add in also a laundry hamper because I had forgotten to add that. And there is a fire alarm, but there is no thermostat. So just going in here and swapping out, as I said, those flowers to make the landscaping fit. But that is everything for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please, a like is always much appreciated. And if you're new, why not subscribe? And if you are interested, as I said, in having more of a series with more homes like this that are based on native dwellings, Links, let me know in the comments and if you have any suggestions I would love to hear them but I really hope you enjoyed this I had so much fun making it thank you everyone so much for watching I will leave you with the screenshots and have a lovely day hey.